talking to other girls at the same time. So I propose you use a no kissing for three months dating rule, no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months. Never be fear induced when it comes to getting physical with somebody. Never do it because you're afraid like, oh, if I don't, he's gonna move on to someone else. That's what this whole dating culture has been for the past, I don't know, 20 years. Kiss to see where it goes, it's insane. We need to see where it goes and kiss the right one when we're looking for a relationship. But this kiss to see where it goes is fear induced, right? When you when you say to people, no kissing for three months, what do they say? Oh, nobody's gonna wait three months for a first kiss, right? That's a fear induced kiss. Don't be coerced into kissing somebody. Don't fearfully kiss them. Use that no kissing for three months, dating rule, no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. You should be talking to other people, right? So it's okay for him to be talking to other people. I'm literally telling men in their version of this book, right? I'm, tell I'm telling them, talk to multiple people. Don't narrow it down before you know who someone is, just like I'm telling you. But the whole point is to see who rises up above the crowd, who becomes super interesting. If you don't rise up above the crowd, if there isn't a point where, where it becomes apparent that he's really just interested in you, don't kiss him. Hello, love loves. Guys, say hi if you're staying. Say hi if you're staying. <clears throat> I get scared when you guys get quiet and I think like the video is fritzing out and I just spent five minutes saying something and it went absolutely nowhere. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. It's a, it's a very rational fear because it happens all the time. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, lovely. Oh, by the way, read No More Assholes uh, because really what needs to matter to you is who the person is. And so there's 12 character traits in No More Assholes for you to use to help you properly assess the person. Gus, should we do should we do a, a glasses pick? Should we pick some glasses? What do you think? Number one or number two? Uh, he wants to chill this week though and cuddle. Is that good or wait like kissing? Um, so no kissing doesn't mean no affection. Do you want to cuddle? You pink glasses to match the kisses, okay? So the question is, do you want to cuddle? Like, like I, there's, I got a ton of questions, um, right? Like, but, but really the main one is, uh, oh, he's talking, you say he's talking to other girls. Um, how do you know he's talking to other girls? God, I almost want to do a session with this. Um, are you willing to come live with me? You want to come live? I need to read it. Yes, my red flag sensor is broken. Mine was too. Mine really was. Yeah. Oh, you're great at what you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Custom made, you guys. Listen, when you find that thing, oh, when you figure out who you want to be, what you want to be, how you want to do it, oh, it is it is awesome, you guys. Like, I, I just, unbelievable. I have to remind myself every day my life is perfect. I am married. Yeah, yeah, we're actually having our 10th wedding anniversary in January. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> as I hope, okay, listen, if, if anybody watching this live or on the replay, if you know my husband, don't tell him this. Um, but we're celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary in January. And he's already up for a party. Like I was like, do you, do you wanna do something to commemorate the occasion? I thought he'd be like, no. But he actually talked about having a party. So I thought, okay, like let's have a party. But then I thought, let's 
let's make it special and do the things that we didn't do on our wedding day that I have been wanting to do. I keep saying to him, I want to marry you again because I really want to do the travelings. So I think I'm going to surprise him with a 10th wedding anniversary that has the wedding trappings, but without like the ceremony so much or the officiating. But I'm gonna write him a speech. I'm gonna write him a speech and it's gonna be so him, so, so him, because I'm literally getting his words. He just doesn't know it yet. Uh, my friend tells me what he does. He flirts with girls. Okay, so he's a player, right? He's a player. I know he's talking to other girls because my friend is friends with him and uh, TikTok comments. Oh, so he's he's like going into girls comments and flirting with them. So let me ask you this, though. Is he a player? Do you believe there is a one? Yeah, I do. Uh, can you touch base on dealing with trauma while in a relationship? I projected a lot on my partner without realizing it. So this kind of thing is a... Like, if you want me to help you fix this, um, this is a, like, this is coaching sessions because we're talking about a process, changing how you think, changing how you feel, changing how you feel compelled to behave. This is a process. It's not a quick answer. If you want to get started on that process, dive into fix that shit, do what is in that book. This is a book about how to have a healthy relationship by taking accountability for your own behaviors and actions. Um, also good communication tools. This is what you need. You need to take responsibility for your emotions, your behaviors, and you need to communicate better. Oh, reading perfect play. Uh, what do you mean talking to 100 women in 10 days, asking them on dates? So, um, so you so talking to 100 women in 10 days you might not ask every single one out on a date you might start a short conversation and go mm, uh yeah no right so obviously you're not gonna ask that one out but it's about opening the doors like hey what about you mm, no hey what about you something about this one hey do you want to like let's go do something right so um getting those conversations going so that you can gauge whether or not you want to continue the conversation i teach women what i call the hit and run flirting technique and so basically that's going up to somebody and, and i say this in the perfect play going up to somebody and touching them breaking the bubble i don't suggest you do that because male to female i think male to female like my thing is you can touch me with my permission, but unless I've given you permission, you you do not touch. So I'm not about to tell you to go and touch women because my role is don't touch me without permission. But when women are approaching men, I say break the bubble because men certainly see that touch as invitation, whereas we can see it as transgression. So but talk to people go up to people you know for you breaking the bubble is make her laugh make her laugh that's such a physical thing for her to do and the association is oh he makes me feel good because laughter releases those good chemicals so if you can make her laugh to break the ice that's definitely a foot in the door and we value laughter over looks any day um so yeah, talk to a lot of women and ask out the ones who seem interesting to you. Boyfriend, I had to talk about me cleaning more, lovely. I cleaned today, didn't feel I got the appreciation I want. Come and get a coaching session, lovely, so that we can talk about this and I can give you a plan. Um, when it comes to like, you know, this, this individualized stuff, it really does help to get a coaching session because um, I can get the information, right? And when I get the information, I, I know, I know what should be seen and I know what should be said, but without diving into the situation, um, you know, I, I can't help you more than what I'm doing here. Do you have fixed that shit? Are you doing fixed that shit? Have you, have you looked at, is he a selfish short term thinker? Like, I don't know what you're with. I don't know who you have. Ah, oh, book just arrived. We'll leave review. Thank you, love, love. 
I appreciate that. Somebody sent me some roses earlier too. Thank you. Trader, Trader Jolene. Trader Jolene, thank you for the roses. Where is my, where is my username? Thank you. I'm, uh, thank you for the review that you're going to leave. Uh, he gets so jealous and I can't help but run back to him when he gets. No, you can. You can. Right? You can. You're talking about your life as though you have no control. That's not true. Uh, that's not true. Never talk about your life as though you have no control. You run back to him, which means you have the ability to run away. Keep running away, my love. Uh, how do you communicate the no kissing for three months dating role in a classy and appropriate manner? Such I love how you I love how you wrote that. It's awesome. So it's all about making sure you say it before they move in for a kiss. It is it's seriously, you guys, I cannot stress this enough. Do not reject them. Have the conversation before they move in for a kiss. So you don't create a negative feeling, right? You don't want to do that. Nobody likes a feeling of rejection. Don't reject them. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, actually, I got to talk to you about something. Don't do that. Um, tell them, bring it up before they move in for a kiss. Hey, I just want to let you know. Uh, I'm really intent on finding a committed long-term relationship and I'm using a no kissing for three months dating role because I want to make sure I know who I'm going to pick for a relationship. And I think three months is not too long or not too short. And just own it own it but you need to read no more assholes if you're asking this question you have to read no more assholes because you need the science you have to have an, an intelligent conversation about this you need the why all the motivations behind it you need the script how you're going to say this um, and you need the how how you're going to navigate this in a way that allows the two of you to get to know each other and creates good feelings that just keep you know generating and again no kissing doesn't mean no affection but affection happens if you feel affectionate not because there's like you know affection o'clock just like there was kiss o'clock fuck kiss o'clock we're not doing kiss o'clock anymore and it's not going to be affection o'clock it's like if i feel warm and fuzzy i'm going to show you affection Red flag, motherfucker. Okay, so one of the things that I say, people say, what's a red flag? I go, if he doesn't like me, that's a red flag. So uh, my man has seen your videos and says, I should stay away and not listen to your advice. Help. Yeah, that cry for help says everything. Everything. Generous, hardworking, devoted men love me. What's he missing? Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is he missing? Because one of those is hitting them right in the fucking ego, and that's why he doesn't like me. So which one is it? I love you. Ooh, I already purchased a book. It gets here on Friday. Read in perfect play. Yes. You're so welcome, love. Have you considered getting on City Line or Maryland Dennis to promote your work? Uh, if they want me, I'll go. Um, if they want me, I, I'll go. Sure, if they want me, I'll go. Uh, I fell in love with a girl who has a boyfriend. What should I do? Leave her alone. Leave her alone. If you love her, you don't interrupt her. You let her make her own decisions. You don't try to coerce her. I love your advice. Thank you. This look is gorgeous, darling. Can I tell you, my husband would hate the lipstick. He would hate the lipstick. Uh, they often have experts, but your message seems so much more relevant. It is much more relevant. What's one question to ask to see if my man is worth it? To see if your man, you're already in a relationship and you want to ask, what? Those questions need to be asked before you pick them for a partner, my love. You need to not commit to someone you don't know and then try and figure them out and see if they're worth it. I am an expert. Uh, what? Guys, do read your questions before you send them.
Thoughts on a guy who hooks up with a girl the day after being dumped. I have no thoughts. I have no thoughts on that. When you are single, go do you boo boo, whatever you want to do. I have no thoughts on single people having sex with other people. I really don't. You can go have sex with somebody the day after you break up with them. Day after you end your relationship, you can go have sex with somebody. I have no thoughts about that. The day after somebody breaks up with you, you can go have sex with somebody. I have no thoughts about that. You are single. Why would I have any thoughts about a single person having fun? Or drowning their sorrows? Or having a distraction? I have no thoughts about that. If like, if you came to me and said I broke up with my boyfriend yesterday and, and I kind of feel like going out and just forgetting about it and just having a one night stand, I'd be like, girl, if that's what you want to do, go do it. I'm not going to judge you. We, this body is, is built for pleasure. And, and sometimes we want to distract ourselves from pain in some way, shape or form. And that's parachuting. Uh, and if you're in a free fall, there's nothing wrong with the parachute. So I don't, I don't judge that. I really don't. I am reading Fix That Shit and he is a generous long-term thinker. Um, so I would suggest a coaching session to see how this can be negotiated because, um, you know, you don't want to be mad at each other. You don't want to turn little things into big fights. You don't want to be mad at each other. Nikki dogs, how much are you meditating? Is it five o'clock? What's going on? How do you, oh. Guys, oh, in a sec. <sighs> Sorry, you guys, I'm reading your comments. Reading your comments. Uh, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Who wants a notification when I go live? Can a woman change a man's perspective? Nothing changes a man's, nothing changes anyone's perspective, but their desire to, to, you know, be open-minded. You, you can't, like, if somebody doesn't want to change your mind, there's nothing, nothing, nothing you can do. Uh, if somebody is open-minded and willing to learn new things, then yes, you can change someone's perspective. But it's, you know, everything is possible. Every single thing is possible. So those of you who want a notification when I go live, click on my picture up here. Once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. My sister just introduced me to you this afternoon. What do you think? Did you go, did you binge some TikToks? I cannot marry you. I will not marry you. I do not want to marry you. I've already married the best man in the whole entire world. Sorry. I boy, okay. Uh, my ex avoided all difficult discussions. If it happens in my next relationship, what can I do? Um, so be preemptive, right? So you want to get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. It's never going to work with a selfish short-term thinker. So you want to make sure you get no more assholes. Use that no kissing for three months dating rule. So use those 12 character traits to make sure you know what you're getting into. Get yourself into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. Once you're in there, you need to understand how to create emotional security so that he feels safe being communicative and you understand how to communicate properly. So create that communication foundation by doing what is in fix that shit. So if you have a generous long-term thinker who loves you and the two of you are communicating in a functional way, you will not have this problem again. 
I did a TikTok binge this morning. It's so therapeutic. I love you. A uh, great way to start the day. Oh, my love. I love that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, this is such a great day, you guys. It's so, so, like seriously, it's such a good day. Wins, 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 wins all day long. Um, I, I said this on a previous live, previous live, but I'm just so excited with this. Um, you're welcome. <sighs> so my husband has a shop. He's got drivers coming in all the time. And uh, this, this one driver, I don't know how they got on the conversation, but he, he wanted to fix the relationship, make the relationship better with his wife. So my husband sold him one of my books. He came back a week later and thanked, he said, he said tell your wife, I said, thank you. Um, because apparently his wife apologized. She read the book and then she apologized. And she's been realizing um, how much he loves her, how he shows his love, and she's been much more relaxed and communicative and um, sweet, sweet. So he was in here today and um i went and had a conversation with him and i said you know i heard uh i heard things were going well i said have you noticed a change in her since she read the book he's like oh yeah <laughs> so i go oh so what's changed and he said you know like we, we would go for walks every day but we never talked much and it was always just like it, it had become kind of tense there'd been some like health issues that had come up and um she wasn't reading him properly and it was putting her off emotionally and that was translating itself into the relationship as a sort of like discomfort and tension and she read the book it released all of that um and he so he, he said now we talk all the time we and we go when we go on our walks we're talking the whole time and he said it's always like so nice and so comfortable so yay um, and then my husband helped her figure out how to sleep better at night by turning off like n no electronics in the room at night. She used to do her iPad, like do crosswords on iPad at night. Um, but now like because of my husband's advice, she, uh, she does her puzzles in on the papers, not in the iPad, no electronic devices after like nine o'clock at night or something. And she's sleeping through the night. Uh, it was fix that shit. Yes, fix that shit that helped save their not. I mean, I mean he wasn't going anywhere there in their 60s He was like, you know till the day I die, right? But the fact that their relationship got better and he's happier and so he, he's mad at me though He's mad at me because his wife wants him to read fix that shit And so I said here's what you're gonna say to her You're gonna say mark off the chapters that you want me to read and put the book by the toilet And I'll read a chapter every time I sit down to poo which is your favorite book you've written the easiest to write the hardest? Uh, my favorite is Fix That Shit because I was fixing that shit while I was writing Fix That Shit. Um, the hardest, the hardest, the hardest was Come Back Queen. Um, the, easy, the easiest was Say Yes to Goodness. Um, and, and I mean, Say Yes to Goodness is my shortest book too. But uh, Say Yes to Goodness was conceptualized while I was writing No More Assholes. But it like... And I, and I, like, I wanted to get to it, right? Like it was, it was just, it was clawing inside of me, but I couldn't write this one until I'd written all the other relationship ones. Um, so it, it was waiting, 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 waiting. It's like, it was like a horse at the starting gate, right? Like it's just dying to get out, but I couldn't write it until I'd written the relationship ones because that's just how I was being driven. So this just poured out like automatic writing like crazy. No electronics means I need to cut off your lives. No, <laughs> it's so cute. It's so but yeah, it's so cute. I love stories like that. Thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Hello, lovelies. Oh, how are we for video? How are we for video? Is video okay? All that stuff. What's your website? It's canadastatingcoach.com. Are we still surviving on here? Is it? Is it? Glitch? Are we glitching at all? Do, do, do. 
CanadasDatingCoach.com. Video is good. I like it. Uh, how do I get over fear of rejection? You don't wait to get over fear of rejection. You don't wait for it. If you, if you were to wait for everything to feel comfortable before you did it, you'd never get anything done. Um, seriously, think about everything you've accomplished. It was always nerve-wracking the first day, wasn't it? Um, like, like first time you went for a job interview, you first time, the first day you show up at work, first time you got behind the wheel of a car, you didn't, you didn't wait to not feel afraid. You didn't wait to not feel nervous. You just went, okay, this is what I'm doing. And you went ahead and did it. It's the same thing. This fear of rejection, you don't wait until you're not afraid to feel it. You just, all right, got to get this done. And you just do it. And it's just, you know, it's, did it get easier driving a car? Did it get easier showing up for work? Did it get easier going to job interviews? Yeah, it did because you went ahead and did it. And then you did it again, and then you did it again, and then you did it again. Same thing with rejection. So when I worked in the strip club, by the way, like I, the first half of my career, I did not go up to people. I waited for people to come to me and, and say, do you want to go for a dance? And then I changed that. I started going up to people and saying, hey, do you want to dance? doubled my income so i really told myself it didn't matter if people said no the no's were the route to the yes and because more familiar then you're glad you did it exactly fixed that shit also helps with self-esteem yes it does which i think is why people fear rejection remove the ego so self-esteem is not so much uh ego ego is is um Ego is your imagination of yourself. Self-esteem is um, your belief in yourself, right? So I don't, I don't think the two are the same thing, and I, I don't think, I don't think, yeah, they, they don't, they don't talk a whole lot to each other. Um, such good advice as always. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 